The top stories. Tourism officials reassess failing Brazil market, but Colombia shows promise. Rihanna to star in documentary about her life. And get ready, the chess roller gets a CPL pick. Welcome to Nation News for Wednesday, April the 13th, 2016. Thanks so much for joining us. The Brazil market is proving to be a tough nut to crack for our local tourism marketers. Billy Griffith, the CEO of the Barbados Tourism Marketing Inc., says arrivals have been disappointing and officials will have to reassess Brazil, which was seen as key in diversifying source markets. Speaking at a Canadian radio show event here, Mr. Griffith said a twice-weekly flight from Colombia was performing better than the weekly flight from Brazil. The, the business from Latin America, especially Brazil, has been extremely soft for the last several months. And it is a combination of factors, the economy in Brazil, um, the, the Zika virus here. So there has been very much weakness out of the Latin American market, specifically in Brazil. Um, so we're working at it. Um, Avianca has started off steadily. They started last December. So we're about, what, four or five months into that program and we're really going to be ramping up our, our sales and marketing efforts specifically for the Colombian market in the next few months as well, because we think that it's opportunity in the summer months. Mr. Griffith said the winter season had been a good one for Barbados, and while there will be slow periods in the summer, crop over and other events should boost arrivals. A university historian made a case for racial unity in Barbados, when he delivered the latest museum lecture on Tuesday night. Dr. Henderson Carter said that while the celebration of the 50th anniversary of national independence is a time for reflection, it is also a prime opportunity for the races to work together. The whites have lost political power and they did so in 1951 with universal adult suffrage. They still hold on to economic power. We have a new group coming in the community called the Indo-Barbadian Community. Indo-Barbadian Community. And we still have the laboring classes or the working classes. Some people may say the emerging middle classes. But I believe that this is the prime opportunity for all of these groups and classes to come together, putting their heads together to build a nation. The work may not be that obvious to the naked eye, but Transport Minister Michael Lashley insists that fairly substantial priming and painting has been done in preparing the old Queen's College building as a new PSV terminal. He now says the river terminal home to ZRs and minibuses should be finished by year end rather than the original date of July. Even so, a tender still has to go out for the remaining works after the first phase is completed by ministry staff. It has been confirmed that Liat will have to look for a new chief executive. The resignation of CEO David Evans is final and he won't be persuaded to return as Antigua's Prime Minister had apparently hoped. In a short statement, the troubled airline said the board of directors had accepted the resignation of Mr. Evans at a meeting earlier. Director of Finance Julie Reefer Jones has been appointed to act as CEO. The Board of Directors thanked Mr. Evans for his two years of service during which he was at odds with home base Antigua over his attempts to reform Liat's bloated structure. At one point, it was even reported that he had proposed that a new carrier be set up with its home in Barbados, one of the main Liat shareholders. Rihanna is to be the subject of a brand new documentary said to be an unfiltered look at her life. The singer will star in the film, which is being directed by Peter Berg, who made The Battleship, the 2012 action thriller. 
Rather than focusing on her musical rides or much talked about style, the film will give fans a glimpse of the real personality of the Bajan singer. Rihanna, meanwhile, is now tied with the Beatles for the second most total week spent at number one in the U.S. charts. Her single work, featuring Drake, has now led on the, the top spot of the Billboard Hot 100 for its eighth consecutive week. With her latest hit, Rihanna has equaled the Beatles, who held the top spot for 59 weeks in total during the course of their career. The current record holder for the most time spent at number one is Mariah Carey, with 79 weeks. In sport, remember that famous chess roll from the under-19 Cricket World Cup? Well, look out for it in the CPL, the Caribbean Premier League. Barbadian Shamar Springer, who introduced the chess role to the world, has been chosen as the under-19 player with the Barbados Tridents in the CPL. He says he's looking forward to the experience and hopes he gets an opportunity to showcase his talent. Five other members of the West Indies on the 19 World Cup winning squad have also been chosen for other franchises in the CPL, which runs from June the 29th to August the 7th. Members of the champion West Indies T20 women's team continue to be feted. Shumilia Connell and DeAndre Dutton returned to their former school, Frederick Smith Secondary, and were presented with plaques. Connell took time to perform the popular champion dance with the students. Haley Matthews, who starred in the Women's World Cup final, was back at Harrison College, as were others who starred in other sports like double Carifta gold medalist Shade Williams, as well as national representatives in swimming and chess. Christchurch Foundation School also honored its athletes during morning assembly. The school had several representatives on the Carifta swimming and athletics teams, as well as the youth netball tournament, which was held at the National Netball Stadium. And finally, a man from Brooklyn took in 94 consecutive hours of TV to break the Guinness record for the longest time spent watching television. 25-year-old Alejandro A.J. Fragioso started his bid to become the world record holder with two other binge-watching professionals. However, only he had the perseverance to successfully watch all 94 hours, breaking the previous record set in March of this year by a group of Australians who watched 92 hours of television. AJ credited his Mediterranean diet and frequent stretching for his stamina in the TV marathon. The rules of the record allowed for five-minute breaks once an hour, but AJ was otherwise barred from moving his eyes away from the screen. He said exhaustion started taking its toll as the hours turned into days. The TV marathon started last Friday, passing the 94-hour mark on Tuesday just after 5 o'clock in the morning. And that's Nation News, your news, your time, your way. Join us on Thursday.